What up, guys? Yep, we got another Oktoberfest beer coming at you. And this is from Four Peaks out of, I believe it's Tempe, Arizona. It's the Four Peaks Oktoberfest. It's got a nice little kind of nighttime thing of, uh, of Tempe, Arizona. Little tents for Oktoberfest. It says tasty, toasty, prosty. I can get behind that. Although, I'm gonna admit, I'm a little, little worried because it, it's not a, a, a Martzen um, traditional German, uh, Oktoberfest beer. This is just a Vienna lager. That's it. That's all it says about it. So I'm a little skeptical that this isn't really an Oktoberfest beer. It's just here's your here's your lager and blah. So I'll, if you watch my one other um, Four Peaks review of Kilt Lifter, you know, I, uh, oh, it wasn't the most glowing. It wasn't terrible, but. I think I just more just kind of you know, riffed on beers in Arizona in general. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? So anyways, let's crack this open. And let's pour this out. It's definitely on the lighter side of everything it's almost got like an apple juice kind of a uh, color to it is very clear very very clear um again i don't rate it on color but um and it's it has a very like bud light glass to it where the glass it's almost you feel like you can almost just shatter it in your hands but you know whatever um all right let's get into the review and get into the smell Mm. There might be a just a hint of funk, just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, a bit of corn. Sorry, the dogs are all surrounding me. They want their food. I know. I know. Give me a minute. It has some of the connotation you want from the Oktoberfest spirit or aroma that you want from an Oktoberfest spirit. It has um, a bit of that kind of deeper... Um, Subtle, smoky, um, fruitiness, almost more of like a, almost like a, like a sour apricot skin, kind of. There's definitely picking up some of the barley. I have a funny feeling this is going to be a little more, more of that barley whip on the tip of my tongue, but maybe not. Um, the aroma is not, I'm a little like, ugh, I don't know with this one. Like it doesn't really like wow me. It's not, and there's something, there's almost like a, almost like a sourness to it. I'm a little, I'll definitely drink it. But I'm a little, I don't know with it. So I'm gonna give it a half on aroma. It's, uh, I don't know what I'm, completely what I'm getting into. Um, and there's enough just subtle notes where I'm just like, I might not like this. Um, so, and it is 6% ABV. It contains wheat for all you gluten people out there. You know, only one percent of the population suffers from that. Um, I don't know what it's called, but where you're not allowed to have gluten, which means one percent of the people aren't allowed to have wheat or grains. The other percentage of people that are gluten free are just lying, and they want to tell you that they're gluten free. They probably do CrossFit too. But anyway, that is a different brand altogether. So, anyways, uh, no, no, I was gonna be like, kind of, it's a half for aroma. Let's get into the taste. 
Uh, the, the, it doesn't have as much of that barley whip on the tip of my tongue that I thought it was going to have. So that's okay. It has almost a... There is almost like an ethanol taste to it. Um, there's something... Something in there, like... Um, I don't know, but there's, there's something, there's almost, um, not like a, it's not like chemically really, it's just like, almost, yeah, like a propulsion gas almost, just a little bit, and it's, um, it's like somebody told him to use charcoal for the flavor, it's like, ah, nah, we use gas grills here. It's like, no, dude, you're, you're missing the point. Ah, we're, we're using gas. And almost, you don't really get that charcoaly smoke to it. I'm getting more of that propane gas to it. So, I feel like, ugh, definitely. And I'm not even really getting like a Vienna lager taste specifically. Like, for me, I would much rather have a lot of those Vienna lagers, like the, the Mexican Vienna lagers. Like, I think those taste better. This one, I think it's, it doesn't really... Uh, it's okay. It's not really doing it for me. Um, I, I, it doesn't... It just tastes like an uh, eh Vienna lager that they slapped an Oktoberfest sticker on. Because it's not even like the legit Oktoberfest style. Um, it's almost like they took like a little shortcut, and, or they just sucked at making their regular style, and so they just went with the Vienna Lager. And I feel like it's just, it's like Oktoberfest is out of Munich. Why are we doing Vienna? That's probably not a real um, analysis, but I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. But I'm just like, ugh, it's it's just mm, not doing it for me. I feel like I'm getting a little more of like a like a granny apple aroma to it. Maybe that's what some of that kind of methane things taste. I mean, it's okay. I've had worse, but it's just, it's not what I, like, ugh, it's not really what I'm going for. So I'm, I'm not gonna recommend it in taste. It's, it's, again, it's just, I feel like a lot of the micro beers are gonna feel like they are inclined, they have to make an Oktoberfest because people want an Oktoberfest, so you gotta stay relevant, so you gotta make it. But it's only four months, so just throw something out there. And I feel like that's what this is. It's I feel like it's really kind of missing. They kind of half-assed it. But uh, there's one thing like I've noticed around here, a lot of the bigger drinking holidays isn't as big. Like um, I've had people talk to me about St. Patrick's Day. They go, like, oh, it's so big. You go downtown, it's like. I don't know what you guys are saying is big for St. Patrick's Day, but like I lived in Savannah, that's huge. Been to Chicago multiple times for St. Patrick's Day. That's like these are like crazy. This these are big. This is like nah, like no one really cares. Um, no one really cares. The um, single miles not uh, not crazy, um, and so a lot of the the more beer kind of centric holidays or drinking festivals is not really that much of a thing around here. Um, I don't know if it's just the beer scene hasn't quite picked up, although there's like two dozen microbreweries around here and only like four of them are good. But I don't know. This It's just not doing it for me. So yeah, I'm not going to recommend it on drinkability. I mean on um, taste. Uh, Alright, next category is about price and 
it was, I believe, under two bucks or right around two bucks. So for a InBev owned micro beer, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to call it micro beer. I don't know what the rules are for that anymore. Um, for whatever it is, it's, it's still two bucks, two bucks. It's not bad. So I, even though I'm not a huge fan of it, you're not going to go broke drinking it. So sure, why not? I recommend it for uh, value for price. Uh, all right, next category is distinction. How distinct is it? And I'm sorry, this I don't think this is really an Oct- Oktoberfest beer. This is you're masquerading a Vienna style lager as an Oktoberfest beer. Because if this is Oktoberfest, then like Victoria out of Mexico, that's Oktoberfest. Then like Dos Equis, um, the the um, yeah the Vienna Dos Equis, whatever, not the green one, but the other one. Um, then that's a then that's a um, an Oktoberfest. Every Vienna style beer is an Oktoberfest. Then it's not. They're just getting lazy with it, and they didn't feel like making a real Oktoberfest beer. So no, you suck it. It's not. Um, sorry, I'm saying suck it to Four Peaks. I feel like that. Like I feel like all the ones I've had from them, I'm just kind of like. Just, uh, I don't know if I'll be really trying too many more from that because I'm kind of like. Um, so yeah, um, distinction not. I mean, just, it's distinct as in it's not correct. It's just uh, a half-assed, not Oktoberfest beer with an Oktoberfest label slapped onto it. Good job, guys. So. I'm not going to recommend it for uh, distinction. Drinkability, let's try this out again. And I mean, I feel like, like this is gonna, another one of those where even if you, okay, maybe you feel like trying it out and you don't get a six pack, get one. Because after one, you're going to want something else. This is just one of those things where the taste kind of like drags on you and eventually you're going to be like, all right, I, I can't do this whole six pack. Who wants to trade with me and let me give me some some of the, the other stuff? So distinction, I mean drinkability, nah, it's just it is six percent. So I think that's pretty close to what all the other beers have been. Like most of them have been around 5.7, 5.8. Um, outside of maybe like the Sam Adams and Lightning Cool, which is kind of the low fives, but nah, nah distinction or drinkability. I'm just it's got me rattled, man. Just so, nah, just not to all of it. And last category is what I buy it again, and I will not. This, if I was to do my list of Oktoberfest beers, I probably have tried, this might be number 13, lucky number 13 of the season, this season. I'd probably put this at the very bottom. I think this might be 13. Uh, it's just nothing about it's really, really doing it for me. Outside of the price, which is marginal for a Budweiser beer, basically, it's just nothing about it for me is the is um, will make me want to buy it again. It's just if I if this is the only Oktoberfest beer I find on a tap. If I go to a bar next week, I'm just going to get a different kind of beer. Like, sorry, Oktoberfest. The bar is just not carrying anything good. So, sorry, Four Peaks. Not recommending this. This is just uh, blah. Which sucks, because the last beer I had was, like, the perfect. Everything was great on it. So, I just got one from, like, possible number one beer to possible bottom blaze beer. So, but what are you going to do? You can't win them all. So, anyways, that is my review of Four Peaks Oktoberfest Vienna Lager. What do you guys think? Have you had this before? Um, are you a fan of it? Have Did you have these? Um, are you a fan of Four Peaks? What do you think of the other breweries? I know, I mean, a lot of people are fans of it in the area. I feel like the fans of it in the area just haven't had other micro beers to really compare it to. But... Again, I said in like two videos ago, get stuff from New Mexico, man. It is like low, it is legit a great beer state. Maybe it's because like you actually have to like haul ass to make it. Like you don't have crazy micro beers popping up everywhere. So you have to hone it before you get in. 
So yeah, give me New Mexico beers over Arizona beers for the most part. But this one is just blah. So, but maybe you don't think it's blah. Maybe you like it. Maybe tell me if you like it. Tell me in the comments. Um, if you are a Four Peaks fan, what is your favorite beer by them? Maybe there's one I'm just missing and I haven't had it yet. And I'm giving them a bad rap because I'm just I'm trying the beers that I'm just not connecting with. Let me know. Maybe I'll get around to those. But um, yeah. So that is a review of uh, Four Peaks. I told you guys to be in a lager. That's about it says it all. So like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will just catch you guys later. See ya.